Now, I want to say at the outset here that the techniques that we're going to implement, especially around DAX formula, are relatively advanced. But I still think it is totally worthwhile going through exactly how to do it because in the end of, at the end of the day the way we actually get this grouping segmentation uh, analysis is via a pattern that you could reuse in a number of different situations so if you don't immediately understand eventually what DAX we write to get this calculation don't worry you can still potentially use this in some form of analysis that you do and in the background you just need to get to a point where you can eventually understand it all. Okay, so just as a quick uh, intro into what we're trying to do here, we are trying to dynamically group information. So think of it like we might want to group, and this is the example we're going to run through, we might want to group our products but based on profit margin. So we might want to, if I come to the products table, let's have a look at the products table, we may, want, we may want to group our products and see what is the average profit margin we make on all our products, but then we want to create a, 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 a grouping of those. So we might want to look at high margin products, mid-range margin products, and low range margin products. Now there's no way to do that uh, dynamically with the data model that we have. The only way we can do this dynamically is through uh, using this technique. We first of all have to create a supporting, ta supporting table with those, uh, with those groups, and then we need to write some DAX formula that enables us to then group them um, by the by whatever yeah um, by whatever dimensions we place in there. So whatever groups we place in there, like high, mid, and low. Okay, so let's now work through this. The first thing we have to do is we actually, and this is a good example in itself. We want to actually work out well, what's the average margin for our products now what's great about this model is i already have total profits right so all we've got to do is total profits by total sales uh, and if we do it via measures we can actually get uh, we can actually get the answer here so let's create a calculated column and let's call this average margins and all i'm going to do is i'm going to go divide total profits by total sales And we get our average margin here. This is this is throughout time. There's no date filter on this at all. I'm just going to change this to a percentage. And then we could also go descending so we can see our high versus low. So as you can see in this example, there is not a huge divergence uh, in margins across all our different products here. But it doesn't matter. The same technique could apply to ones uh, to an example where you did. Um, but it um, but in this case we're going to be walk, working with smaller. Uh, differences between our, our, our groups, so between the low margin, mid-range, and high margin. Okay, so now that we've got our margin table, now or our margins, we now need to create a table, a supporting table, that enables us to group our products by these particular margins. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this, this table product margin group. And then we're going to call uh, this the group. We're going to call this the group, and we're going to go high. Actually, we'll go low, mid, and high. And then we're going to go min, and we're going to go max. And so our low margin products are going to be anything from 30%, and let's go up to 36%. 36% and then we're going to go from 36% to 38% and then high is going to be 38% up to basically 100% which is never going to happen would be nice if it did but it won't so we now have our product margin group so this is the supporting table that we are going to use to dynamically work out which where these margins lie which group they actually lie in so I'm going to go load. And if we come back to the front uh, report page now, actually, well, first of all, we've got to go to the data model. So we'll go to the data model, and you'll see here that this product margin group out the side is now has no relationship to our data model, but uh, but we need to put it 
we, we want to put it relatively close so we can understand well this is a, a supporting table for, for some analysis that we're doing and now that we've got this we can use this group we can use this group and we've got high low uh, mid now we can use this min and max within some logic that we're going to develop uh, that will dynamically work this out for us so if we now create a measure and we'll call this margin group profits bingo equals then we need to use calculate and then i'm going to go total profits this is something i've already created and then i'm because we actually want to work out what the profits are within these groups okay so obviously we need to start well, uh, with total profits and then if it's inside calculate it's, we need to create a different context for this calculation and this is where the more advanced logic comes in then we're going to go and use filter now filter is an iterator and we're going to get it to iterate through a table for us and the table that we're going to iterate through is actually those average margins that we just created we want to go and iterate we want to go create basically a table that we have and we've done that with values we're going to create a table of that column we just created and then we're going to iterate through every single row of that column and we're going to iterate through based on this logic we're going to iterate through and we're going to go uh, count rows here then we're going to go another filter and this time we're going to do a filter over our product margin group so in this case we're going to iterate through every single row in our product margin group so this is so as you can see we're getting pretty advanced here but stay with me stay with me and then we're going to go average margins so average margins is greater than or equal to the min the min which is the min that we put in that table then let's go down to another row here and average margins is less than the max that we put in that table and then we've got to go we've got to get uh, go over the count rows and then we have to go greater than actually we'll put this down to another row greater than zero and then close that off okay so I'm just going to push enter and then I'm going to drag this mar uh, this margin group profits into this table so we can have a look at what the results are actually saying. So now we're getting results, that's great, but we obviously have to understand well, are these results even correct? We can kind of get an inkling that it is correct because this 57 million odd is actually, uh, if I just do a quick check, if I do a quick check and just go total profits, that's actually the results that we get for all profits. So it's somewhat correct, but we need to understand the logic here. The best thing to do with some of this advanced logic is to work backwards or, ex or to work with the filters. So first of all, try and understand what the filters are doing. This filter is saying for every single average margin, so we've created a table of that average margin column, and then it's saying for every single row of that table we have created, go and look through every single row of this table, which is a supporting table that we created, and for every single row in there, check if it is greater than the min or and, sorry, and less than the max. And if it is, then retain that row, and then count rows as greater than zero is saying, well, if that row is retained, it must be within that group. And then it's doing it for the next average margin, and the next average margin, and then that's how the context changes for this total profit. And that's how we're getting these into groups like this. Now, this is highlighted even more if we create a matrix so let's create a matrix and then we're going to uh, place our products so let's go grab our products name and let's put that into the rows and we'll put our groups into the columns and here you can see for every single one of these that exact same logic is happening and that's why we only get so each product is, is, is actually within one of these groups and then it's counting up the total profits um, for that particular product right so we're getting that 57 million which is correct so things are looking pretty good and now check out what we can do here we can now use this group inside of this group <coughs> dimension inside of other visualizations so let's grab this out here and we're going to grab a margin group profits and we'll create a donut chart out of that 
<coughs> and then we'll go grab the profits, uh, the profits dimension. We'll put again margin group profits against that. <coughs> and then we're going to create a clustered, a stacked bar chart, sorry. And then we'll just uh, we'll sort that. And then I'm going to grab my group, my group again, and put it into the legend. And then you get different. Now we can see well what are the high margin versus the low margin and the mid range margin products. And we can see them in a, um, you know, we can see them in a chart. So we can see that our mid our mid range profit margins are actually generating by the looks of it the, the greater portion of our um, profits in this case. And we can even, if I just change the interaction, and so all of this is connected as well up with, uh, into the data model because our DAX has uh, has incorporated incorporated it inside our data model. And we can now click through and say, well, look at our high margin products, look at our low margin products, look at our mid range margin products. So we have covered a bit there, and this uh, this this video is, is a bit longer than normal, but there was a lot of logic to, to cover, especially around DAX there. And look, don't worry if this doesn't immediately make sense. There's a little bit to this, I know, um, but I certainly just wanted to showcase a really awesome technique where you can uh, very quickly whip up these quick uh, these these quick and easy groupings of information that d don't you know they don't generally uh, exist in your um, in your analysis and until you actually create them in this sort of way.